Hello and welcome to this very special edition. Uh, I am in conversation with His Excellency Kailash Puriyak, the former president of Mauritius. Uh, thanks very much, sir, for taking time out and for speaking to News9. Uh, I, I want to first begin by congratulating you on your National Day, sir. Well, thank you very much for, co for congratulating us on this special day. It's a very special day because it is the day on which we obtain our freedom. It took a long time, a long battle. It started in the early 30s, and we won our independence in 1968. And since then, when we became independent, our country has made huge strides for economic and social development of the country. In the pre-interview, we were discussing about uh, how there is a spurt in you know, representatives of Indian origin, so be it prime ministers and presidents. And we often don't see that it happened way before 2000s and it happened with you, as a matter of fact. You are a person of Indian origin and you became the president in 2012. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that's somewhere lost in the history books. No, you know, the history of Mauritius has always been that we, have, we are a nation, a multicultural nation. And uh, we have multi-party democracy. Everything happens regularly through a five-year election, like in India. And people vote for the prime minister. And the president is elected not by universal suffrage, but by parliament. So the history of Mauritius since independence has been that we have worked together, all the communities have worked together, and we have a united nation, as we call it, a small united nation. And it has been through democracy that prime ministers who, are, who were elected were of Indian origin. But we have had one prime minister who was not of Indian origin. Okay, so yeah. that's a rarity to not have a prime minister. No, not a rarity, but it, it happens in a democracy, you know. Right. It's right. the that's... people who choose the prime minister. Absolutely, and that's also because of the large number of Indians living in Mauritius. We are not, we are about 52% of, of the population of Indian origin. Okay. And then we have people from Africa, people from Europe. It's a, it's, it's a as I told you, multicultural, multi-religious, uh, community, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, how do you assess the relationship between India and Mauritius? The two countries have close historical and social ties, as you rightly mentioned just now. Uh, how have they changed, sir, since you were the president and up till now? The relationship between Mauritius and, and India has always been excellent. It is unique, I must tell you, that we established diplomatic relation with India before we became independent when we were still a colony. And after independence, the, the relationship has always been excellent, but after independence, it became, it was deepened because we are econo socially, emotionally, and culturally uh, attached to India. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there is also a very deep trade partnership as well. The trade partnership that in fact was solidified when the two countries signed a bilateral trade deal in 2021 in form of CECPA or a comprehensive trade deal. In fact, it was the first country in Africa where India actually signed a bilateral trade deal. How excited about are you about the prospects of bilateral trade? Listen, relations? that agreement was negotiated over 10 years. It started, it lasted, the negotiation lasted for 10 years. We call it SEGPA, it's a comprehensive agreement between India and, and, and Mauritius, which is like a free trade uh, agreement, where both countries have identified uh, uh, about uh, what can be exported uh, and uh, both ways, and uh, without uh, any taxation, without any, any tax, pay payment of any tax. And that is a very uh, good instrument for us. And uh, I hope that we will be able to develop that uh, comprehensive agreement and manufacture the, art, the goods that we have to export to India. And it will be both in the Indian and Mauritian interest. 
Okay. And what areas of partnership are you most excited about? Because we have partnerships in various areas, in various forms. We have partnerships as, as far as, you know, construction of infrastructure is concerned. Uh, we have a trade deal with uh, Mauritius. What areas excite you the most? Listen, I will tell you very frankly, the relationship with India has always been excellent. Since 1968, I must tell you, we had a very close collaboration with the Indian government. Whether it was in, in the building of our infrastructure, or in the educational sector, or in technical support. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, the first director of our Ministry of Economic Development was an Indian. We, 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 are, uh, we had the, in, he, 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 he was, he became the first director. And therefore the collaboration has always been very, very uh, close. And uh, I must, I told you that India has supported us in our, in the building of our infrastructure. For example, in the health sector, we have a hospital which is called the Jawaharlal, Jawaharlal Nehru Hospital. We have in the educational sector, we have the MGI, Mahatma Gandhi Institute, which, is, uh, which was uh, uh, funded by India, and the hospital was also funded. And like that, there are so many other things that have been funded by India. And also, we have had several line of credits with India, loans that we have purchased goods from India, and we have paid back. I think we were briefly also touching upon the fact that uh, the, the, there is a historic relationship here. If you could perhaps emulate a bit on that, uh, you know, I, I remember we discussing in the pre-interview of how the history of the two countries is also very rich and entangled. And it's not just about the last 50 years where the two countries helped each other, but also the historic ties between India and Mauritius that are very deep. Yes, the, 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 I told you that uh, our relationship is not only commercial, or economic or trade, that is there but we have a cultural and emotional tie with India. Because after the abolition of slavery, the British wanted to have labor to work, bonded labor to work in the sugarcane fields. So many Indians from here were taken by the British to Mauritius, especially from Bihar and from the state of Bihar and from UP, mainly from there, to come and work in the sugarcane fields. And they were wounded laborers, they worked hard. It was very difficult in those days for these people, yet they had patience, they, they, uh, they worked hard, and we succeeded. Okay. And clearly, that has resulted in a lot of Indian, in people of Indian origin doing really well in Mauritius. I can assure you that we, we live as a family, okay. you see. Everybody is doing his bit. Okay. You see, not only the Indians, but the other communities also, they are doing their bit, they have contributed to the economy of the country and they are still contributing. So you became the president uh, prior to a change in government here and for the last nine years we have had the Modi government yes. at, at, at the centre. Uh, how much have things changed or progressed in your assessment? Uh, and, and having a distant view and obviously also hosting the Prime Minister when he was there, when he had just become the Prime Minister uh, Yes, in I India. had the privilege of receiving him when I was the President, to receive him, uh, to receive Prime Minister Modi in Mauritius. He came on an official visit in 2015 and I had a long chat with him. I could see uh, the kind of excitement he had for, 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 for the development of India. And since then, uh, we are very keen follower of Indian politics, I must tell you that. We watch very carefully what is happening in India. But I can tell you that Prime Minister Modi is very passionate about the economic, has been, from day one, he has been very passionate about the economic development of, of, of India. And I can tell you from day one, he realized that there cannot be any economic progress without the kind of quality infrastructure that you need to connect the different parts of India. So he started massively investing in infrastructure like ports, airports, roads, trains, just to connect uh, India very 
very close, uh, very well, so that trade can flourish. Everything depends on trade. And also, he chose another path, was the technological development of India. By developing the technology sector of India, he has rendered the economy more competitive, and also he has brought it societal transformation in the lives of the poor people. As I told you, that he was able to bring millions of poor people into the banking system. And today, if I don't know whether you remember when the late Rajiv Gandhi was the prime minister, he made a remark that whatever money was being voted for the poor, only 15% reached them. 85% was eaten up in the course. In, in the course. But now, with this kind of development that Prime Minister Modi has brought, technological digitalization of the economy, 100% of, of the due which are paid to the poor are reaching their account. The so direct their benefit, benefit transfer. Direct benefit transfer. That is a huge. And there are so many other issues. Massive, massive investment in education, in infrastructure. He has urban, urban, urbanized the rural area, which is very important. He has brought, as I said, the general sales tax, which is a unique achievement of the, of the Modi government in the sense that he has created, he has unified the economy of India in the sense that there is one tax, one country, one tax. Not only that, he has also uh, transformed the economy of India by making an informal economy formal today. Everybody, as far as I know, they are paying their taxes. India is getting a lot of money through the GST, and it is being used for the economic, social development of this country. That is the kind of transformation he has brought for the last nine years. But I must tell you one thing, to be fair to, to the other government, that the, the liberalization of the economy started with Prime Minister, the late Prime Minister Nasima Rao, when, when uh, Dr. Singh was the Minister of Finance, they started, but it moved up with a slow pace. But when Prime Minister Modi came, he accelerated the development, and today the world is looking at India like a country which is progressing. You will see that last year, I'm told, it has been a record year for foreign direct, massive foreign direct investment in this country. As I said, without investment, without education, there cannot be the door. I think Prime Minister Modi has understand, understood that very well, and he is in the right path for, to create a modern India. But you talked about how much India has changed in terms of its digital prowess, in, in terms of infrastructure development, FDIs you mentioned thereof. You obviously know India before Prime Minister Modi and you yes. know of India after Prime Minister yes. Modi. Yes. And you talked a great deal about how much country has progressed. Anything that you can uh, uh, think of or mention uh, that we can still do better at? I think there is room, room for a lot of improvement. But you cannot do, he cannot do all this within a span of nine years. I think the most important element that must be taken into account in the, Indian, in the, in the development of, of the Indian economy is, is the dividend of its population, right? You have an average pop, have an, a population which is, has an average age of 30 to 35. But if you don't give the proper education, and you don't empower this, the, the youth, they will, won't be, be able to contribute effectively in the economic development of the country. So I feel that education should, together with infrastructure, occupy the top of the agenda of, of, uh, of India. We have several examples. I told you South Korea, for example. They use their human resource, they develop their human resource through education to reach where they are today. And the second example is Singapore. Singapore has no natural resources. It, it relied hugely on its human resource development 
to attract investment in Singapore. And today, Singapore is not a developing country, it's a developed country with a per capita income of $50,000 American. Right, right. So I feel that much emphasis must be laid on education. Yeah, you have a good educational system, but I think it is a bit limited only in the urban areas. It has to be spread across India. I want to come to a more contemporary pressing issue, which is the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Yes. And, and I want to first begin by asking, how has that impacted, uh, you know, trade deals or, or economic prospects in Mauritius? What's, what's the impact been of Russian-Ukrainian conflict for Mauritius. Yes, like the whole world has been impacted by that war. You see, Mauritius cannot be an exception in a globalized economy. Mauritius cannot be an exception. We have been impacted. Inflation is high in Mauritius. And also uh, the cost of, of imports have, 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 have increased. The energy sector has, has uh, created some kind of uh, issue because it's becoming, uh, it has increased. But as, like other countries, we also we have suffered. Yes. Okay. Are uh, your supply chains intact? I know you said inflation is a little bit high. Are the supply chains in the country intact? Uh, how the petrol and you know diesel prices been in, in Mauritius? Because again, that has been impacted in India because of our close ties, obviously, with Russia we have been able to uh, stay well, afloat. You have been lucky to, to, have, uh, to import your petrol uh, from Russia in spite of the war, and diplomacy has been very, very good. And, but we in Mauritius, we import on, from the international market. Although the price of petrol has gone down, this is a huge debate in Mauritius right now, that the government has not reduced the price of petrol, although uh, the price have, have, have fallen down, not uh, in the on the world market, but this is a, a, a huge debate going on in Mauritius. The people are asking government to reduce the, the price of petrol and and diesel, but the government has so far refused to do so. Okay, yeah. uh, and and what is the current uh, economic climate in Mauritius like? Uh, given in, given that, that there is a war happening in Europe and and that's impacted a lot of a lot of you know realities that we see today, sir. You see. Well, we, 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 used, we used to have, after independence, we had for 45 years a very close relationship with the European Union. Whatever we were manufacturing in, in Mauritius, for example, textiles and our sugar were being exported to the European countries. Now, all these pillars of our economy have disappeared because the sugar protocol, we had a protocol with the European Union, not only us, but all the African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries. That protocol is no longer there. The multi-fiber agreement being, has been dismantled, so we cannot have access duty-free quota free that we are having for our textile. So we developed other sectors of our economy, like the service sector, the offshore sector, the financial sector, but I think it is not enough for us to meet the challenges that we are facing today. We need to, to find different, uh, for example, uh, pillars where we can develop our economy. For example, have a small manufacturing base, which we don't have for the time. It's very small, but we have to increase the manufacturing base. I want to end this conversation, sir, by asking you, uh, you, you mentioned that you've been frequent to India, uh, and, and you've come during your presidency years, and prior to that, and you've, you've come here again. Uh, how much have things changed uh, as far as you know, uh, your day-to-day -day life in India is concerned? I think there have, in terms of economic development, there has been a huge difference. I know India, I came here, for, I've been here for many, 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 many times. I've come here in 1990 then, but when I see the kind of development that is taking place in, in India, well, we have, must be pr proud of it. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, Thank sir. You. It's a pleasure. Thank you.